Shalom, shalom. It's your brother, New Breed. Coming through with another live stream. Welcome to another broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. So we're talking about the 2024 solar eclipse. April 8th, which is tomorrow. And a lot of people want to know how this solar eclipse relates to end time prophecies. Now, I see a lot of material out there online. And uh, clearly, you all value my opinion because you're over here to see what my take on all of this is. And uh, a lot of people are coming with various theories on how it actually relates to end time prophecies, but I'm gonna go to a few scriptures to kind of show you how it actually relates. So pound the like button, pound the like button. Shout out to all my cool nerds out there. We gonna get into this. We talking about a solar eclipse. This particular solar eclipse only happens once in a lifetime. But it's happened before in different people's lifetime. Now, what makes this one so different? What makes this one so different? Why is social media in a frenzy? Why is it that people are traveling across the country to go to X meets the spot? Why is there so much behind this particular eclipse? Well, I want to go to a scripture. I'm going to break this down to you, right? All right, give me one moment. This thing here, bro. The scripture I want to go to is uh, Matthew 16 and 4. And it reads, A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Very interesting scripture right there. It says, a wicked, adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. So why is everybody so invested in this particular eclipse? Because we live in a wicked, adulterous generation. This is why people are traveled near and far. Um, people are just in awe about what's going on with the luminaries. Now I'm gonna add some balance to all of this because as you can see, that scripture brings up the prophet Jonas. And if you look at the whole campaign that's been ran, they brung up the same thing to try to come back to scriptures. The scriptures speak for itself, but man with their private interpretation, they like to make something be what it's not. See, the reason why so many people are seeking for a sign is because it's a lot of hypocrites walking the earth right now and they can't see the signs around them. They can't see the sin, the wickedness, the perversion around them. So they're looking for something in the heavens to show us that the Lord is returning and everything is everything. Matter of fact, there's people out there who are claiming that the second coming will actually happen tomorrow. <laughs> For real. Although the Bible says we know not the day nor the hour, the Bible tells us plain as day that not even Christ knows, not even the angels in heaven know. Only the Most High God knows when the world is going to end. Now, is this a sign of end time prophecy? Yes. Is the solar eclipse a sign of end time prophecy? Yes, it is. All eclipses are a sign of the most highest anger. Now, 
What are the scriptures to ver verify and validate that? And if y'all would like, y'all can share them in the chat. All right, so I, I kind of highlighted some scriptures, right? Um, you can go to Amos 8 and 9, where the son is alluded to in Amos 8 and 9. Micah 3 and 6, Zechariah 14 and 6, and Joel 2 and 10, where eclipses were literally regarded as a token of the Most High's anger. So yes, the Most High is very angry. He's holding back wrath and judgment here on this place. So scripturally, there is some truth to a solar eclipse speeding time up, dealing with time. And also on the left-hand side, you got these people in CERN working overtime to try to beat time concocting weaponry that can move at the speed of light that can move through aeons and light years to try to do what the same thing they were trying to do in the tower of babel and that's go to war with the most high they're seeking after the god particle and when this when this speeding of time happens tomorrow there will be a change in time tomorrow now what do you mean a change in time i mean there'll be a different dispensation that we're in why? Because while the Most High is showing us his fury and anger, i.e., he did an earthquake in New York City, 4.8. Meanwhile, the eclipse is coming, 4.8. That's the sign of the Most, that's the Most High speaking, if you ask me. Now, everybody got their theories, but this is how I'm seeing this thing. And, and it's connected. The Most High can work through numbers as well. He's showing that this eclipse actually represents a sign of his anger. Now, let me continue. During Christ's crucifixion, there was darkness. Some would say it was an eclipse. Um, you know, time and time again, when there's a shift in the atmosphere, when there's atmospheric changes, when there's spiritual changes, these eclipses do occur. Now, I remember personally, in my lifetime, eclipses taking place where they would say this only happens once every 50 years and once every 60 years, once every 100 years. And I've, I've heard this time and time again. I don't even know how accurate these people are because you got to remember the heathens would attempt to change time. They will attempt to change time. So when they say things like that, I don't really take it serious. Right. The heathens always make up their own thing when the most high is going to do what he's going to do. Right. Um, again, eclipses, are they in the Bible? Yeah, I gave you some references. I gave you some scriptures. But there's another scripture that we need to go to that we need to examine. How does relate to end time prophecy is what the people want to know. In the book of Jeremiah, it tells you, be not dismayed at the signs of the heavens for the heathens are dismayed at the signs the heathens you know the luminaries the sun the moon they so busy up there looking at what's happening there they're not looking at what's going on around them now the bible calls them hypocrites it says that you can see the signs of the heavens and you could prepare if it's a stormy weather, but you can't see the signs of the times. You can't see that it's inordinate affection everywhere. You can't see that they're rolling out chips that they're putting in people's hand. You can't see that the mark of the beast is being implemented on this planet. You can't see that it's um, uh, marriages or relationships that go against God's perfect will. We talking about man and man, woman and woman, all of that going on. You can't see that marriage is at an all time low. Nobody's staying together. You can't see that crime is on the rise. You can't see poverty, famine, earthquakes, earthquakes in various places. The same signs that were spoken of in Matthew, the 24th chapter, that there'll be wars and rumors of wars. See ye that you be not troubled because the end has not yet come. We don't know the day or the hour, but it surely relates to end time prophecy. 
Now, what's going on in CERN? I try to give a rendition of what I've studied over the years. This is not just something that I came up with off the top. This is something I've been looking into for a number of years in regards to the Hydron Collider and some of the predictive programming they put out in TV series and how they aim certain weaponry to pretty much harvest sonic waves coming from the sun. Um, you can expect this thing to take place. The, the beast system is going to, the, to its next level. The artificial intelligence has gone to its next level. And see, the Most High showing his wrath, his fury, shaking the world up, but at the same time, they're working simultaneously on the left-hand side to try to get the God particle and harvest dark matter. Now, what does that mean, Bree? What does it mean they're going to harvest dark matter tomorrow? Yeah, CERN is going to be harvesting dark matter tomorrow. They've done it before. They did it last year. They did it the year before. They did it the year before that. And what has happened to the people? Each and every year, what has happened to the people? And I want y'all to be nothing but sh short of interactive. Since CERN has been fracking the earth, cracking open stargates, shooting sonic waves into the sky, what has happened to the people year in and year out? They've gotten less spiritual. They've gotten more demonic. They've lost more control of themselves. There's more evil on the planet. There's also more paranormal activity that takes place. There is more sightings of things that we don't quite comprehend. What we call alien species, we see those. We're beginning to see skinwalkers in plain sight. We're seeing people losing a rabbit mind. You see people tweaking. You see people literally being controlled by walking demons, being hacked. You see people being hacked. Like the Denzel Washington movie, Fallen. We talking about entities traveling in the upside down, just hacking people. And they losing total control, committing crimes, doing all kinds of things. Waking up in jail, not knowing what the hell they did. What do you think that is? They don't have no spiritual covering and something has happened. Something is happening esoterically. Something is happening. Now, when I speak like this, people don't really understand where I'm coming from. But the most high God, he gives me the words to project to y'all what is taking place but the carnal mind can't really comprehend. But there's a world that you see every day. It exists. You can see things in front of you. You can reach out and touch items and you can talk to people, you can interact. That's the physical realm. But there's another realm called the spiritual realm. And I hate to sound like I'm being condescending because a lot of people who have um, been in truth, a lot of people who are, are believers, they know this, but you have the physical realm, you have the spiritual realm. It just so happens, the kings of the earth, um, your Charles Swabs, your William Gates, um, world, various world leaders and, and different powers, they have been getting information and insight from the other realm on the left hand side and they have been gaining certain information that can help them to bridge and merge the two worlds so this is why you see a lot of the new agers right now talking about they're going to gain the powers to manifest they say april 8th we're going to gain the powers to manifest and we're going to be able to you know channel what we desire in life we're going to have superpowers. This is the type of conversations I hear going on in the so-called conscious community, those who follow various ideas. And a lot of it is occultic. And a lot of the witches, warlocks, and wizards really believe that they're about to gain some type of power around this time. But what's really going to happen is 
they're gonna deep they're gonna sink deeper into the rabbit hole of their own devices um we may even see some form of mass possession seriously we may see some form of mass possession and i'm saying we may see it but we may not because what happens in the privacy of people's homes you're not really preview to all of that but i can tell you if, if people are really tapping into some of the same magic that they're using in CERN, if people are really tapping into some of the same sorcery, then what makes you think that you won't be previewed to the same demons, the same minions of Satan? And this is why I tell people all the time to put away those crystals, those manifestation journals, stop burning sage, stop, you know, doing your witchcraft, your sorcery, stop calling the psychics, Stop believing that you're God and, and you're doing all of these weird practices because now they do this stuff on a high level. The people in Switzerland, which is located in a land called Apollyacum, and they're actually communicating with Apollyon, the demon, at the bottomless pit, cracking portals and stargates, communicating with 10, 12, 13 foot beasts. That's what's going on. Now they doing this on a high level. There's demons in CERN that got them people petrified, terrified. There's people who work at CERN that can't even go home. They just, they just gotta stay there. Now, if they're dealing with those type of demons, those type of ancient entities, then on a small level, if you just dibbling and dabbling in tarot cards and Ouija boards and those kind of things within your home, then you giving those spirits a point of entry because they are going to gain more power. Look, the Bible says the world will be given into the hands of the wicked. And it also tells you that Babylon will be the home of every foul spirit, every foul spirit. And that's what's happening. And when we talk about Babylon, we're talking about the Babylonian structure all together. We're talking about the northern states or the northern countries. We're talking about the entire Roman Empire. Every foul spirit will be harvested. And that's exactly what they're doing. How could this place be the, the, the cage of every foul beast, every unclean spirit? How? Because they're actually doing things in the atmosphere what we call the heavens and they're actually going through different dimensions and portals now i know it sound crazy you know like i get it i get it it sound like a conspiracy but no it's actually scriptural it's all scriptural and the bible tell you not to really harp on what's going on in the luminaries because we got to focus on us what's going on down here how to live our lives righteously because one thing about it the most high is going to put a seal on his people now i see various platforms talking about um that this eclipse is a sign of christ's coming now when you put out material like that and the average person sees that christ doesn't return around that time what happens is people grow hardened hearts and they say to themselves, surely the Lord have delayed his coming. That's what people say. It sets up, it sets up doubt. It plants seeds of doubt in people's minds. When we know, we don't know the day nor the hour. All we know is during these, these time dispensations, these, these, um, atmospheric changes we know that that means the war has been turned up that's what that's what it really means and what war are you talking about Bree? i'm talking about the spiritual war goes to another level now the spiritual war is going to another level and you know this is why i tell people all the time man you got to get control over your flesh man it's a spiritual war you got to put away the things that are destructive in your life you got to put away the things that you know aren't good for you because those are gateways and those are portals certain things you watch on these monitors and these screens are portals 
It's all spiritual. I tell people all the time, stop watching um, corn. Stop watching certain demonic um, things that you may entertain. Why? Because as they turn up the notch, as time changes, and th as this eclipse comes, you know, you're going to see where people really stand. You know, that we're always going to have situations in the earth where things change and people going to change. Now, it was a 4.8 earthquake. And then on 4.8, the eclipse is coming. Now, this earthquake took place in New York. And of course, in New York, there's a lot going on right now. And I'm not telling anybody who are inhabitants of that land to be in fear. Um, but the most hot, and not even but, because that means I'm saying yes, be in fear, and I'm not. What I'm saying is you have to maneuver properly. You have to adjust to the times that you're living in and perhaps consider leaving that land. Because again, within scripture, a solar eclipse is has been stated to be the most high's anger and when he does an earthquake that's his anger like he's literally showing you he, he's he's it's like he's holding back judgment that's the best way that i can really convey this to you it's like he's holding back judgment to seal his elect that's what's happening in the planet and you know he spoke to us through the numbers man he spoke to us to do the numbers on that. Uh, somebody said, I'm so happy I got out of New York. Bless you. I'm glad you did as well. And there's going to be certain people, once they get out of New York, the prophets, the teachers, the real men of the Most High, when they leave New York, New York is going to face judgment. Because everybody, once the real men of the Most High leave and take their respective families with them, then the Most High can do the same thing he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. You may even see, you may even see Leviathan come out the water and they try to cover it up. You may even see Leviathan come out the water. What you call Godzilla. What the world calls Godzilla is real, it's biblical. And if you notice, Leviathan always comes through New York and knock that thing apart. You just never know, bro. You know, it's real. It's real like that. And you know, they would cover it up. The news would cover it up and all that. But people would be swearing up and down. They seen Godzilla come out the damn ocean. I don't limit what the Most High can do. What, what, really, what we really should be afraid of right now is the Most High. The Bible tells us the beginning of all wisdom begins with the fear of the Most High. That's what you should be afraid of. And some people wonder, like, when I make material like this, um, Nubri, are you trying to promote fear? Yeah, I want, I want, um, I want sinners to be afraid. I want people who um, are living wicked to be afraid of the signs of the times. I do. I want you to be afraid. If you're not living right, you know. You should be very afraid of these times because the Most High is showing you certain things and he's showing you that judgment is coming. And to be real with you, we don't have long. We really don't have long. I don't know how long we got, but it ain't long. Because everything that's happening prophetically is just jumping off the pages. Somebody said, I moved from New York to North Carolina last August. I'm so glad that I listened to y'all and I'm my own understanding. 100. Somebody said, I'm tired, but the Most High won't let me give up. Absolutely. Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Absolutely. And I want to play something for y'all in regards to CERN. Hold on. It looked like my temperature then rose up on this thing. Hold on one, one moment. Because, you know, the Bible tells us to be aware of their devices. That's what the scriptures tell us. The reason why I go to these particular sources is not to give more power 
to the dark side. But what it is, is the scriptures tell us to beware of Satan's devices. It says we are not ignorant. This is what it says. We are not ignorant to his devices. See, when you understand how to how their weapons are, you understand how to move spiritually, because you remember the scripture says the weapons of our warfare are not what? They're not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But having the knowledge of their carnal weaponry, the things they're doing, you know when to pray up and get right. Cristano, thanks for the support, says, just got my tax return money. This is my donation towards the nation. God bless King. Keep bringing that spiritual voltage. All praises. Thank you. I appreciate the support. Oh, let's let's read this as well. Revelations 13 and 17. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with 10 horns and seven heads with 10 diadems on his horns and blasphemous names on his head. Yep, that's actually speaking about nations. That's a parable. The horns actually represents different kingdoms and nations. But we'll get there. Um, hold on, y'all. Um, one moment. Let me pull this up for y'all. Man, this thing is like tweaking, bro. Give me one moment, y'all. Give me one moment. And if you can, ladies and gentlemen, if you're learning something, just do me a favor and hit the like button. Um, Hit the like button. I'm out here multitasking for y'all. Giving you some insight on this uh, eclipse tomorrow. Yo, what is up with this thing? Yeah, I don't like messing with this thing. Hold up. Bro. Okay. I got it. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Me and technology don't get along all the time. Now, I want you to hear what NASA scientists are hoping to learn, what NASA scientists are hoping to learn during the solar eclipse. And we're just days away from a once in a lifetime celestial event, a total eclipse of the sun. Parts of our state will be in the path of totality. And our Anthony Yanez has those details right now. Yeah, but Amy, here in Houston, we get a partial eclipse where the moon will uh, look uh, like it's taking a big bite out of the sun. And while we are hoping for clear skies, scientists are hoping to learn from the eclipse. Joining me now is NASA solar astrophysicist Alex Young. Uh, good morning, Alex. Thanks for joining us. How good is morning. the solar eclipse different from the one in 2017? Well, um, this this eclipse has a couple of things that are different. Um, first of all, the path itself is wider than it was in 2017. and because of the the size of the shadow also the length of totality so if you're in that path of totality you could have up to almost two minutes more of totality and in some places four and a half minutes and lastly um, a lot more people are going to see it more more than 10 million additional people live in that path and will get to experience the eclipse even if they just walk out that the, outside their door but the, for the scientist's point of view, the sun changes, the corona itself changes over the solar cycle. For the person in the chat that asked me, will it, will, will it really be three days of darkness? Absolutely not. Um, and there's a lot of people out there saying that. Um, another thing that this solar eclipse is going to reveal is how many false prophets are online teaching. Um, there's a lot of people who are straight up liars and y'all going to have to turn them off after you find out that crisis this is not the day of christ's return it's not the end of the world it won't be dark for three days none of that so i don't know where people got all of that they kind of like jumped off the deep end but let's go 
and it's going to be very different during this particular eclipse than it was in 2017. Yeah, I was in Eola Hills, Oregon for the 2017 eclipse, and I had 58 seconds, and it went by so fast, and I'm in Fredericksburg, Texas this time, so I'll get four minutes and 23 seconds. See, a lot of you brothers and sisters, if you blink, you're going to miss the eclipse. It, it'll be seconds for some of y'all, depending on y'all's location. Of course, we are hoping for clear skies. Forecast doesn't look good right now, but a total solar eclipse is the only time we can see that outer atmosphere of the sun with our own eyes. Now, do you hear what they said? A total solar eclipse is the only time they can see the outward atmosphere. I'm telling you, they're trying to see the firmament. They're trying to see the firmament. They're trying to really find a weakness in the firmament so they can crack it. They're trying to go to war with Yah, man. They're trying to find a weakness in the firmament. And during the solar eclipse, CERN more than likely is going to be firing some type of weaponry in the sky, some type of frequency to try to get out there. This is what they're doing because the world powers know they're running out of time. They know they're running out of time. And they know the children of the light are waking up. God's real chosen people are waking up. And um, they're, you know, they're desperate. They're desperate to fight the most high. Uh, what will scientists be looking for during this eclipse? What will scientists be looking for during this eclipse? Well, it, during the eclipse, this outer part of the atmosphere called the corona is a really special place. It's actually the firmament. They call it the, the corona. This outer space, listen to what they say in this outer shell, pretty much. Called, they're calling it the corona. I don't know why. It's the firmament. Let's go. Where solar activity originates. So these are huge explosions, solar flares, and also big eruptions of material. And that gives them solar flares, big eruptions of material. They're trying to use the sun to crack the firmament. I'm telling you. They showed you in the show three bodies. It was called Three Body uh, Problem. It's on Netflix where they aim this energy weapon towards the sun to create sonic waves to move at light speed in order to communicate with other entities. It's the beautiful aurora, the northern and southern lights, but it also impacts our technology, communications, GPS, it, it, and even power grid. Whoa, it impacts our technology? Are y'all listening? It impacts our technology. The same thing in that movie, Three's Body, that showed three body problems. It affected the artificial intelligence. The AI, the B system. Now, what? How? How would this affect technology unless they're communicating with different entities that are responsible for giving mankind a lot of the technology that we have today? Think about this, y'all. So this is a unique opportunity to study it in a way that we could never do uh, otherwise. And as that shadow moves across the country, it changes the atmosphere. And it changes as that shadow moves across the country, it changes the atmosphere. See, they don't understand how I'm able to break down what they really got going on, what the world powers are really working on. I'm not supposed to know what I'm telling y'all. I'm not supposed to be able to convey this to y'all like this but this is what they got going on they literally they're literally communicating with other uh, other entities and forces and they take they're taking advantage of an uh, of an atmospheric change gives us an opportunity to study many different layers of the atmosphere during this uh, period with the totality and and later this year now see i mean i'm telling you man I'm telling you, this is what's going on. Let's go. This is Parker Solar Probe will make history when it flies closer to the sun than any other spacecraft. It's actually going to fly through that corona you were just talking about. Uh, so tell me about this mission. They're calling it a corona. Well, this is a really, really unique mission. It's completely autonomous. It travels around the sun and each time getting slightly closer and closer. By the time uh, we reach December 24th of this year, Parker Solar Probe will make its closest approach uh, a little less than 4 million miles away from the surface of the sun, flying through the corona, flying through this part of the atmosphere. We can see flying through part of the atmosphere. So what, what it is, is they believe the firmament has layers and 
they're believing because this is what the heathens do bro they they crazy bro let me tell you when i say mankind crazy thinking they can fight the most high and, and go above him like these people are, are really like spiritually retarded um so they believe that there's layers to the firmament and april 8th they think this is an opportunity to actually crack through a layer now mind you these dumbass people done sent so many rockets up there they done sent so much up there to try to get through that firmament and it's crash landed every time showing you that the most high is not to be messed with bro he you're not gonna get no god particle it's not gonna happen only thing that's gonna happen is y'all gonna be introduced to another demon that's gonna be possessing people and, and, and all this kind of stuff because of the type of games they playing only thing they gonna find in those realms is more demons to be released those are the atmospheric changes that dark matter let's go during a total solar eclipse but parker will be measuring it directly giving us data that we've never had before to really understand what's happening at the source of all of this exciting activity on the sun yeah what's incredible about that is you just think about the surface jeremiah be not dismayed at the signs of the heavens for the heathens are dismayed at them the heathens are dismayed at the signs and trying to figure out what's going on for a reason they're actually trying to go to war with god himself and all these movies like independence day and all of that that's just those type of movies is trying to get mankind prepared to fight god's chariots because when you look at the spaceships from independence day those are actual chariots the description of chariots in the bible and of course you got these beasts that come down that look like aliens but they got these little cords that look like dreadlocks coming out their head they really trying to prepare you to fight god's angels and his people you know the, the saints the the actual chariots that come in because the most high got an army coming out that sky we just ain't seen it yet look of the sun at being at 50,000 degrees and then you have the corona at 2 million degrees and so why and you know when you're able to go in there and look at it I just think so many answers you're going to find uh, with this that's pretty incredible so how people have known how to predict eclipses for thousands of years through the sorrow cycle which I think is what is that an 18 year cycle and three months or yes. three days or something like that but a NASA mission has made those predictions even more precise in the past few years how is this happening well, uh, one of the things that's really important is the moon itself. The moon, a lot of the previous predictions make the assumption that the moon is very smooth, and it's not. It's got mountains now, and depending... Now, let me tell you something. They're not as intelligent as they like to put on. Um, when you read the book of Enoch, it tells you the pattern and course of the luminaries. And they're doing things based on the moon's course, and the moon has a mind of her own. That's what they don't understand. That's why sometimes you have a harvest moon, this moon, that moon. It travels through its own paths, according to the book of Enoch. So you can't base anything off the moon. That's why we don't get into that new moon, Sabbaths, and all of that garbage. That's nonsense. This is why the Most High said the Sabbath day is on Friday sundown and Saturday sunday, every seventh day. Seventh day is the Sabbath. Very simple stuff. But what did it tell you in the scriptures? The heathens would attempt to change dates and change times. And that's what they're doing. They always done that. And they trying to, really, they trying to confuse mankind, but the most high got this. Let's go. Hold up. On the orientation, how that shadow casts on the ground is different. And so we have very precise measurements of this now from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. That information we then take back and use in our maps and gives us much more accurate timing and much more accurate location and gives us a view of what's happening during the eclipse that we have not had throughout all the times that we've been predicting it. Yeah, I was just reading an article about how people on the outer edges of that path of totality, it's like, you really need to be careful because there's a chance you think you're in the path, but because, as you mentioned, yep. because of the, of the moon, you actually might be out of the path, and then you're only seeing a partial eclipse, you're not even getting a totality there. So it's really fascinating stuff. Right. So that's what it is. They're trying to break... They trying to break through the through the firmament. Hold on.
Let's see. Somebody says some people believe in Christ. Oil moving up your spine, and Jesus only came here to spread love and peace. What are, what are you talking about? Somebody said it's funny how they did the same thing in a Tower of Babel. As you can see, they don't change. Like you said, be not dismayed at the signs in the heavens. Exactly, they don't change. It's nothing new under the sun. They they keep doing the same thing. First Corinthians two and six. <coughs> Excuse me. How by we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet know not the wisdom of the world, nor of the princes of the world that come not right. And these people, this is what they do. But I will say, they will bring about changes. And, and that's that's the unfortunate part of all of this. Uh, we know how we know how ignorant they are, we know how spiritually retarded they are. But they will bring about changes for the weak minded, for people who really are not living right, people who not with the most high, people who believe everything they hear, people who can get tossed to and fro with silly doctrines and, and lies. And, you know, those type of people will be affected by by this um, by this solar eclipse. It will be it'll, it'll be an atmospheric change. Um, I don't know, some people who dibbling and dabbling in certain things, they're gonna feel the force. They're gonna feel they're gonna feel the dark forces because that's what they're engaging in. I think the mind control may get a little bit stronger. It may get a little stronger on people. Revelations 1 and 11, it said, write down what you see and send the book to the churches and the seven cities. I don't see how that scripture have nothing to do or anything to do what we're talking about uh somebody says better grab your popcorn god's judgment will be something to remember absolutely yep they sure will and all of these so-called low vibrational people they're gonna be affected dark matter is no joke which i gotta understand about dark matter let me break it down to you it's actually dark matter is smoke from hell that's what it is it's the smoke from hell it's a lot of smoke down there so we're talking about smoke from another realm pretty much that's the best way i can describe what dark matter is somebody says i feel a major mandela effect somebody said new breed do you think it will affect the food chain well that's an interesting question of the food chain is being affected by our world powers and these wildfires through energy weapons. That's what's really affecting. When you see farmland being burnt down and you see all these chickens and all these cows and, and, and all this livestock go up in the flames, that's what you should be worried about. And see, that's what, that's, a, that's what I'm talking about. Like, we'll pay attention to something like a sign, a sign in the heavens wondering if it affect those type of things that's already being affected do you understand those are things already being affected all you got to do is pay attention and i think i also believe that the most high who seals his people because we talk about the mark of the beast but we also talk about the seal of yah i believe personally if 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 and these are my theories if People experience a mental collapse of any sort or any type of possession during this eclipse, then most highs people are gonna get more wisdom, more more insight, you know, because the most high is about balance. If if these people are gonna be tweaking out, then our eyes are gonna be open more. That's how I look at it. Anytime CERN do something. Anytime the world powers do something on a planet that's supposed to affect us negatively, whether they spraying something in the air or they're doing something that is really just bad for the people's minds. I believe the most high literally covers his people and he he makes us adapt and we come become we become stronger like gold being tried through a furnace like it's like we go through adaptation. 
It's like he he prepares his people for certain things to come to the planet and we end up stronger. We end up still seeing. And that's why you got to understand. For a lot of y'all who really been chosen by the most high, Satan has worked overtime trying to destroy you and can't even understand why we still here. If it was up to him, we would be extinct. We'd be done for it. And I'm talking about people who really bear the light. Somebody said, yep, it says we will eat poison and live. Yep, that's a fact. That's scripture. Psalms 141 and 10. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, which that I withal escape. Exactly. And that's what they're going to do. Even them people in NASA, them people out there flying them ships up there trying to crack through the firmament. And, man, them people going to get lit up. It's going to be those demons that they get in contact with haunting them. All the way till they destroy. Psalms 21 and 11. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Man. Man, that scripture is powerful. And that's what they're doing. So I see a lot of material out there about CERN as well as the eclipse. Um, yeah, they, they will be firing up that hydron collider. Um, they will be sending, even NASA, the deceivers, they're going to be sending up, they're going to be sending up ships. They're going to send up a rocket, try to go around the sun. And I'm going to tell you, they are capable of sending something around the sun because believe it or not, y'all believe that the sun is like hundreds and thousands. I mean, not hundreds and thousands. Y'all believe the sun is billions of light years away. Like y'all... Y'all understand, bro. Y'all understand how close the sun is to the earth, bro. You don't get it. NASA lied to you. Yes, they can send things around the sun. And they lie so much, man. It's so much I got to teach y'all. Y'all got to unlearn. Y'all really think the sun is a ball of fire? You think it's a ball of fire floating? That's what you think the sun is. The Bible don't say that. Book of Enoch don't say that. The sun is described as a luminary. What's a luminary, y'all? A luminary is a light. It's a light. It's a difference. It's a light that travels through portals. And guess what? The sun is not in space. Yo, the sun is not in space. The sun is under the firmament that they're trying to crack through. I'm telling y'all real talk. I know it sounds crazy, but this is biblical. This is the truth. The sun is a light that moves through portals. Y'all think the sun sets. Where you think it goes? When the sun set, where do y'all think it goes? You think the sun goes, I don't know, under the earth? You think it's just in space and it just goes out of the earth, out of the earth's uh, sight? No, the sun goes into a portal ladies and gentlemen that's what the scriptures tell us yeah it's actually an actual portal the sun lowers and goes in that portal so what do you think this eclipse is you really think that's the moon shining off the sun <laughs> sorry let me stop bro i'm being you know i'm a cool nerd so i get off on stuff like this bro that's my that's my that's my stuff right here no man the moon is not reflecting off the sun in no damn eclipse, bro. That's not what's happening. It's a actual, it's the only time where that portal, an eclipse is when that portal is manifesting. Why is that portal manifesting? Because the most high is showing you that the earth is, is a lot of going on on the earth and it's a sign of his anger. Now, instead of mankind being afraid in a way of, we, we gotta get right with Yah. We gotta get right with the Lord. We gotta do things right. No, instead of doing that, they're going to try to actually create a weapon or try to get get in get around that portal. They're going to try to, this is what they do. They want to enter the portal. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they got a ship going up there with a person in it trying to get through the damn portal, bro. I would not doubt that. Trying to get, to, trying to get through the portal. <laughs> this is how mankind do. 
but that's what it is it's not the moon the moon listen the moon is somewhere else the moon is somewhere else the moon doing what she want to do and yes i said the moon is she because that's how the bible describes it a she the, the sun will be a masculine the moon will be a feminine and she doing whatever the hell she want to do somebody said uh if the sun and moon were outside of the firmament how could you see it on a plane so close and clearly exactly eureka that's what i that's what i'm trying to tell them people i have literally flew over the sun in a plane i have literally seen coming from las vegas coming back to atlanta i've literally flew over the sun and seeing the sun because you know there's a time change when you're flying from one place to the next there's a time there's a time change and i've literally seen the time change i literally seen that sun going to the portal it amazed me i said yo nasa line they ass off you can't tell me something i'm seeing with my own too that's why in hebrew the word nasa means deceiver they lying they're lying I literally flew over the sun, watched the sun disappear in the portal. The portal, the portal, the, you can't see what the portal looks like. It's almost like you could just see the sun slide in it, like almost like a slip in time, like, like, like a, 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 a rip in reality. Like it, the most high is amazing. It's like a rip, like a tear. It's so thin. You can't even see it, but you could just, the sun just whoop, gone. Here go the sun. I'm on a plane over the sun, looking down at the sun, go like this, huh, in the portal, gone, nighttime, because of the time change. But they want to convince you that they traveling thou billions of light years away to send stuff in space to go around. No, nah, what they're doing is they're going to be sending little rockets. They're going to send little things up there. They are going to use CERN and they're going to aim sonic waves because they're trying to communicate with stuff outside of the firmament. That's all it really is. That's really what's happening. Yep. Somebody said, I saw the sun when I flew to Europe. Right. And did the plane blow? Listen, did the plane catch on fire? When you see the sun and it looked like it was maybe a couple thousand miles away, did the sun, did the plane catch on fire? No. Well, Newbury, why is it hot outside? Because a light bulb can get hot. A light can get hot. And there's times where it's even closer, where that light bulb gets closer. It's like a, it's a luminary, a light. Just like if you t take a light bulb and you get real close to it, you can feel the heat of the light. In different seasons, the sun is going to travel even closer. You get up there and fly right now, I, we'd be right near the sun, right near it. They lie. Let me see. Somebody said, especially reflecting. Right. Somebody said, yeah, it's more of a hollow earth kind. Right. Somebody said, yes, the book of Pittis of Sophia. Christ talks about how the sun goes through a portal. I never read that book, but I can verify that it goes through a portal based on the book of Enoch. Some, some, some will argue that it's non-canonical, the book of Enoch, but it, it was referred to scripturally. <coughs> Pardon me. When flying on a plane, there's no curvature. When flying on a plane, there's no curvature. Oh, I guess you're saying that means the earth is like um, flat. I don't know. Round, flat. 
I don't know. It could be round and flat. It can be a globe too. Listen, the earth to me not supposed to make total sense because we can't make sense out of everything. Um, and that's what the flat earthers, they got a problem with me because I, I go by new breed global truth. And what if I told you the earth or the world you live in, somebody said, are you okay? Yeah, I just have allergies, that's all. Nothing but allergies, seasonal allergies. Um, the earth don't have to really make sense. The earth could be a whole dimension. Like, what if, what if, what if everything is a lie? Like, what if it ain't round or flat? What if it's, what if it's a dimension, bro? Y'all ever thought about that? I don't know. I think about stuff like that. What if the earth itself is a dimension? Almost like an alternative reality. Because <clears throat> to be honest with you, it don't make sense that it be, if we try to make sense of it, it don't make sense that it's flat or a spear. Not to me. So, how about we try to, how about we try to get right on the earth and not argue about, you know, it's shape. Because I, I don't think we can prove it. If they can't get past the firmament, if they can't get past the firmament, there's no way possible they can tell me how the earth is shaped. There's no way. Because that's telling me that you can't get up far enough to actually, actually get real photographic images. That's what that's telling me. And that's telling me that everything we see is fake. She riding, ain't she? <laughs> that means everything ain't fake, man. I don't believe NASA. I can't believe the pictures, the images, the moon, la the moon landing was garbage. Like, I don't believe nothing they talking about. We can be in a whole, we can be in a portal. We can be in a whole dimension and we don't know what, it's look, what it look like. But we don't know. Perhaps, perhaps it's not a ball in space. Y'all ever seen Beetlejuice? By show of ones, how many of y'all seen Beetlejuice? By show of ones, how many of y'all seen Beetlejuice? Now we're just using our imaginations right now, right? All right, y'all seen Beetlejuice. Now y'all remember the scene where there was like a board. It was like literally a board and it was different things going on on the board. And what, whatever happening on that board, it was going on in that place. There's another movie like that too. Like sort of like kind of like Jumanji, like whatever happened on that board, that's what's going. What, far as we know, the Most High got a big board sitting in front of him, like a big board, and it ain't no shape. It ain't no like he just. And whatever happened, happened. We don't. I mean, honestly, we just don't know. I, I don't believe these people. I don't know what the earth shape like. Everybody want to act like they know everything, bro. We don't know everything, bro. We don't know everything. Straight up. All I know is it has a firmament and it's a and they can't go past a certain level. So how will we know how this shape if you can't get past the firmament? Make it make sense. So you telling me they can go far enough to tell us the earth is the earth is round or flat? No, it's the firmament. We can be in a whole tear in space somewhere, like a whole, I don't know, bro. What y'all think? Let me see. And man, y'all gotta get the likes up, man. We almost got 1600 in the building. Um, why we don't have over a thousand likes? Yeah, let's go. Let's go on our walk. Let's do that. Somebody said definitely flat. Hey, believe what you want to believe. I ain't gonna argue with you. Uh, Joshua ten and thirteen, and the sun stood still, 
and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Astra, so the sun stood still? What What is that supposed to mean? Do you even know the context of the scripture that you're sharing? Are you saying the sun don't move? Like, what do, what do you mean? Break You break that down for me. You break that scripture down for me. Somebody said there's no sense of arguing about that topic. I don't. People be pissed about that. Like, people really be angry. <laughs> they be angry at my channel. Like, the earth is flat. Prove it. I be like, prove it. Prove the earth is flat. What if I told you it's some things only the most high know and it's meant to be that way? And when you tell somebody to prove something like that, they have to actually prove it. And they can't. Just like I can't prove that it's a spear. I can't prove it. You know, somebody says the prophet of the eclipse is alleged related to Jonah because the eclipse passing through towns. Now, see, that's that's a lie. That that whole um, scripture with the prophet Jonas being used, that actually was concocted by this church that's located in X meets the spot. There's a church in Texas that is spreading that whole propaganda. And it's a lot of rich people behind it, too. And that's why a lot of people believe it's biblical prophecy. When you read the verse previous to that, it tell you, literally, when it brings up the prophet Jonah, it actually tells you that the wicked seek of a sign. It tell you the wicked is seeking after a sign. And then it brings up prophet Jonah, but that church, which is like a cult, it's pretty much a cult. They, um, they're spreading all this propaganda to make people believe that this is some type of Bible prophecy. And that's why you got all these people traveling and you got all these people meeting up to go see the eclipse. Um, in that area. I mean, it's propaganda, y'all. And like I said, who knows what's going to happen to the people who actually go out there. I don't know what's going to happen to them. They may do, they might get on some Jim Jones stuff. I don't know. Or it may be some type of frequency sent their way. Because there's a lot of people going. There's people traveling. It's thousands of people traveling right now across the states to go see to go to a field in the middle of texas to see an eclipse so they can get the full experience now and they doing that at a church it's being organized by a church if if that ain't wicked i don't know what it is that's totally against the bible they wicked somebody said uh isaiah 45 17 says world without end world without end somebody said it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers what scripture is that it could be a circle i don't i don't know y'all i gotta i honestly i gotta do more studies on how the earth is shaped and all that but i guarantee i'm still not gonna find a, a complete answer so i said breed a lot of people going to nigeria falls like why they falls why they fall i don't know why do they falls why do they fall for the bs i don't know y'all see what's happening on the movie independence day when the people were on the rooftop of the building right that part Somebody said, yeah, we're not talking about the shape of the earth no more. I'm done with that. But the bottom line is, brothers and sisters, man, you know, a lot of people wanted to know how this solar eclipse relates to end time prophecies. I answered y'all to the best of my ability. And that's what it is. Man, you know what? I think I left my tablet, y'all. <laughs> I think I left my tablet on the, on the front porch. Let me let me get back around there real quick. They better not touch my tablet, cause I got cameras. You grab my tablet, I'ma know who you are. 
All right, y'all. I'll let y'all later. Shalom and peace.